All right, Ms. Israel, good afternoon. Thank you for your patience with us today. Uh, I think I said during my opening, uh, today's calendar is a, a record breaker for me personally, so we are doing the best we can. Uh, the other party on your case uh, was served according to the records that we have. Is that consistent with your understanding? Uh-oh, I can tell that you are talking. I cannot hear that you're talking. You're coming through now. It's a little, uh, little garbly, but we'll keep working. I can maybe take it off of my headset. It's not clear. Okay, it, it sounds a little rough, but um, so did you receive a call from the sheriff indicating that he was served? I think if you disconnect the headset, we'll we'll try it that way. Um, I, I called the sheriff myself. Okay, and so you saw him get served and removed. You can call it that, yes. Yeah. All right, and I forgot to ask this. Could you please raise your right hand for me? Mm -hmm. Do you swear the statements you've made and that you'll make to the court today will be the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. Thank you. You can put your hand down. Uh, you were living with this person uh, at this Bayside address in DeKalb County at the time you filed, correct? Yes. All right, and in your paperwork, you outline an incident um, among other things, uh, an incident where some threats were made to you and you had been shoved. Uh, tell me what happened on that particular day. Um, this is my second PTO um, that has been filed. So when speaking of this particular one, um, uh, on that day for maybe about a week's time, um, he had not been getting a lot of sleep, um, a lot of pacing on the floor, um, a lot of uh, blame calling for several different things, phones missing, um, saying that the internet was tapped, um, a lot of paranoia um, type of uh, behavior, if you would. Um, so it just continued on and I was working that day and um, he come and he kicked the back of the chair, the chair that I'm sitting in now. And uh, so I stood up, I rose up out of the chair and I was like, hey, you know, calm down. And uh, it was no, no, you're a liar, you know, just, just all kind of, um, name calling at that point and uh he he pushed me um it was more of a a slap down if you would but um we'll call it a push for lack of better terms um, was that a one hand or like two hand that was one mm -hmm. okay and where did he hit you like where did he make contact with you uh it was on the right side of my face okay um did that cause any visible injuries uh no um it was a sting to the face but it wasn't um like any bruising or anything like that. It was an open hand. It uh, wasn't a closed hand. And um, after that altercation, um, I do have a roommate. My cousin does live here. Um, he wasn't home at the time. Um, he did arrive home later that evening. And uh, I also had another cousin come from out of town to visit. Um, and that's the weekend that I um, decided to leave when I did uh, leave the home. Okay, so uh, if... Have you um, returned to the home since the sheriff served him, or had you did you find your own your a new place for you to be that you intend to remain elsewhere? I went to my mom's. I left on the 29th of uh, January. I left and I went to stay with my mom's until he was served. Um, and well, I came back on the 10th um, of. Uh, I think I've got those dates right. It may have been the ninth. I came back home that Thursday night and he arrived maybe four or five o'clock that morning, uh, Friday morning on the 10th. So I called 911. And when I called 911, that's when the sheriff come to serve him the order. I had placed the orders, um, a copy of the orders on the front door. So um, I had already told him that I was going to get the restraining order and he was aware of it um, as I had put the papers on the outside door when he, so that he could see him before he comes in. And so you've <clears throat> you've resumed living in the home since he was served and removed. Yes. yes. Okay. And it's your wish to continue to do that, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, well, based on the testimony that you've provided, um, and, oh, and this is an important question I neglected to ask. Do you have any knowledge that he is in any way uh, incapacitated, incarcerated, or anything that would prevent him from appearing against his own free will? 
No, he actually returned to the home the day after. I have a case number. Um, after he was served, he came back that following night. Um, I had not changed the locks. I had. Uh, he took the car the night he was served. Um, he was allowed to take several different items out of the house, um, and he also took my car. So um, he still has my truck at this time. Um, it's been spotted in our hometown, but um, at any rate, he did return that following night. I did call the police. I have a case number for that. I have not seen him since. Um, what was the year make and model on the vehicle? Um, it's a 1999 Yukon, GMC Yukon. What color? Um, it's light brown. All right. Um, well, I, I will grant a 12 month order that will expire February 27th, 2024. It will order that for that year, he continue to remain away from the residents that he attend family violence intervention and undergo a psychological evaluation and comply with any treatment that is recommended. Uh, and it would order that uh, possession of that 1999 Yukon be returned back to you uh, as part of the order. Uh, all of these issues, the, the T and TPO is temporary. And so this only handles these issues for the 12 month duration of the order. Any permanent disposition of property comes only through divorce decrees. And so um, if that's something that you pursue, just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, but we will, this order will be on file should the police or anyone else you know, need to look that up for any reason. Uh, okay. And you'll be supplied with a copy once it's uh, ready and fully processed by the clerk, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, well, I hope that information helps. And I know there's more outlined in your petition and that we just really scratched the surface of what has, you know, been alleged there. But uh, in my experience, um, first off, as a matter of law, a single act of family violence is sufficient for the issuance of this order. Uh, and I try to make it my practice to the extent that I can not to force people to relive every single detail of everything that they've been through if I know that there's enough evidence that's been presented already for me to make a ruling. So <clears throat> I know that is uh, probably less than you expected to talk about in court, but certainly it was uh, as far as the things that you have endured, it was enough to know to grant the order. And so that is what I will do. Um, we will return you to the waiting room momentarily, and then you'll be free to log off from there, and you should get that email with that order fairly soon, okay? Okay. Um, as far as my uh, my vehicle, since I, I don't have one, um, is that something that you guys would pursue to return to me, or is there anything that I need to do? This is a tough question. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, is, is the first answer. So let me be clear with that. But my best guess is when you get your copy of the order and it says that mm -hmm. um, it's not exactly a stolen car, um, but he's not supposed to have it. And so I would say, um, it, are you in the city of Doraville or unincorporated DeKalb County? I'm in the um, city of Doraville. Um, yeah. Okay. But, I would, I would try to communicate. Hmm? Okay. No, I was just saying that my birthday was just Friday. So the truck literally, the tag, it has no tag on it. I mean, as of tomorrow, the tag will be expired. So I was, so just, I just didn't know what the procedure was. I would ask local police. Uh, this is a situation where you have a little less bureaucracy to navigate in a smaller city like that. Uh, most okay. of the county is unincorporated. So since it's not exactly stolen, they may still be able to put a, like a be on the lookout type alert on it um, okay. but a lot of the cities around that area like on in north to cab and that side of uh you know on that side of things they have something called flock cameras and what they do is they capture license plates of vehicles coming and going entering the city leaving the city of major thoroughfares and they're able to alert when people are wanted when vehicles are stolen uh if they're uh, minor violations like suspended licenses or no insurance and the camera system automatically runs those through and notifies police in case police are in the area to intervene and so it's possible that there's some way that camera system can be leveraged to help locate the vehicle if he's nearby uh, okay. or if you have other ideas about his whereabouts um, then you may be able to sort of coordinate with uh, with the either local police, if it's a town you're okay. familiar with, or the sheriff for that county to see if they okay. can find him, give him the updated order, and retake the vehicle. Okay. All right. Very well. All right.